A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, Abraham did not doubt God's promise and unbelief. Rather, he was empowered by faith and gave glory to God and was fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to do. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. But it was not for him alone that it was written, that it was credited to him. It was also for us, to whom it will be credited, who believe in the one who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over for our transgressions and was raised for our justification. Verum Domini. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has done his people. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. Santo Evangelii Segundum Luca. Gloria Domine. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, what shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for the one who stores up treasure for himself, 
but is not rich in what matters to God. Verbum Domini. We have just heard our Lord tell us, one's life does not consist of possessions. Take care to guard against all greed. For although one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. So then, what does one life consist of? Well, most of us spend the better part of our life trying to make our life better. We plan for our vacation, our retirement. We struggle to save for our grandchildren's education or to buy that new house. In fact, we spend our whole life preparing for a better tomorrow. Now of all the important events that our life does consist of, there is one event, the most important event of all, that we probably do not prepare for as well as we should. What happens after our earthly life has ended? Oh yes, we have our life insurance all paid up, our will has been made, and our funeral expenses are all taken care of. But what about the state of our soul? The church defines the soul as the spiritual, immortal aspect of the human being that gives life to the body. Note very well, it is the soul that gives life to the body. And once the soul leaves the body, the body no longer has life. But our soul, made in the very image and likeness of God himself, will never die, but will live forever. Our thinking, our reasoning, our remembering, our loving, remains with us throughout all eternity. And my friends, whatever holiness we do not attain in this life, God has prepared a merciful place of healing and purification. Purgator. In just two weeks, and throughout the entire month of November, the whole church acknowledges all those precious souls that we have loved so dearly and who may still be in purgatory as she prays for them forgives them and loves them as they now pray for us. Forgive us and love us. And so let us give comfort, 
do penance, and above all, have masses celebrated for all the souls in purgatory, especially those who have no one to pray for them. Do we really need bigger barns, newer cars, more expensive homes? And then, before we even know it, our day comes, and the Lord calls to us as he did in today's gospel. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. And he asked himself, what shall I do? For I do not have the space to store my harvest. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? 